Welcome to Mudify, bringing you the best in power sports mods made easy. So you just bought a Tau Tau Rano 250 and you're looking to add some features. Today's mod is the Trailtech Vapor Digital Dash. Adding essential power sport features like speedometer, tachometer, engine temp, and odometer, the Trailtech Vapor is the perfect DIY addition to your Tau Tau Rhino. Once you open your kit, you'll notice a handful of sensors and wires, and it all looks a little bit intimidating at first, but don't worry, we're going to walk you through each piece. For starters, we're going to get the mounts out. The mount kit that you want is going to be the three-quarter mount. The larger mount is going to be for larger ATVs with larger handlebars. What we do want right now is the three-quarter inch mount. First up, you're going to need some Allen wrenches or a bit driver with some hex head bits. You're going to need two millimeter and four millimeter in order to install your mount. We'll start by attaching the bracket to the back of the Trailtech Vapor. Those two millimeter screws are going to go in there. They're going into brass fittings, so you don't have to tighten them down a whole lot. Just a little bit to keep them from slipping loose as the machine vibrates around. Next, make sure you slip that nut into the little retainer and insert the, the longer of the two screws. You'll notice that the mount is a little bigger than the crossbar, so you're going to have to put a grommet in there, a bushing. I took three quarter inch hose and cut about a quarter inch out of the strip of the middle. You could always take half inch hose, slice it right up the center, be careful, don't cut yourself. You'll want to line up the opening in the hose with the opening in the mount. Slide both of them over the handlebar, it might take a little bit of wiggling. Once they're there, you'll see that you've got a pretty good cushion mount for your vapor. It's going to keep it from rattling around as well as give it a good solid grip on that crossbar. Now that we've mounted your trail tick vapor, the next step is to wire in some power. To do this, you're going to need some split loom, about five and a half feet, some primary wire, red and black. I've gone with 16 gauge here, but you can even go smaller. You're going to need a fuse holder. You'll also need a handful of assorted connectors, butt connectors, slip connectors, some ring connectors. And you're going to need a good high quality pair of crimpers. These have wire strippers built into them and they have the snippers at the end. You'll also need some zip ties to tidy up the installation once it's all done. Now if you're using the stock water temperature sensor kit that comes with your Trailtech Vapor. You're going to need to pull that sensor out. We'll cover that. And you're going to need to lengthen that line. That's going to go in the same line as the primary wire for your power. It'll be tucked into the same split loom. Or you have the option of purchasing the spark plug temperature sensor. It's a more accurate way of getting a cylinder head temperature reading and it's really what we recommend. Now it's time to prepare the fuse holder. First thing you want to do is cut it about in half. Start by stripping the jacket back. Always make sure you use the correct gauge on your wire strippers so you don't accidentally take the copper out. Twist your wires together before inserting them into the connector so you don't have any strays. Those will cause shorts. Make sure to use a ring connector that's large enough to fit the battery stud through. And once you've got it crimped, give it a good tug to make sure it's not going anywhere. Now, put some black and red wire the full length of the split loom. Make sure you leave enough on either end, about six inches or so, for the connections you'll need to make. Next, to remove the water temperature sensor from its housing, you'll need a 12 millimeter wrench and it should break free pretty easily. Once you have it removed from its housing, cut it about halfway down and then you're going to want to carefully strip the insulation back, making sure not to nick any of the copper inside. Once you have it open, you'll see that there's a few various strands of cotton or paper, whatever that material is. Pull it aside and snip it. A good sharp pair of snips will help here. Make sure you don't damage any of the conductors. Now the PVC jacket on these conductors is soft enough that you don't even need to use crimps. Get a good grip on it with your fingernail and just pull. The plastic will pull right off, exposing the copper. Woven in with the copper is also some cotton strand. Go ahead and twist that all together. That's what provides strength because the copper is very weak. You're going to fold that over and crimp that into the connector just like any other copper wire. Do the same thing for the negative side. Remember polarity doesn't matter on this because it's just a data line. And remember to put the slip connectors on the temperature probe side. And on the other side, uh, with the wiring harness on it, you're going to want to put butt connectors. Those are going to go on to the wire that you've already got in your split loom to lengthen the connector. Once you have all of your connections made, make sure to wrap them real tight with electrical tape. This will keep them watertight and dust tight and failure proof. Now, moving on to our power line. You can snip off a handful of this smaller gauge stuff. We pretty much only want the connector up front. Separate the wires using your snips. Once you get them pulled apart enough to put connectors on there, peel them back, twist them, put the connectors on them just like you always do, including a healthy layer of electrical tape. Next, make sure everything is tucked inside the split loom and that it looks good. Leave a couple inches hanging out the front end of the split loom for connecting it to the Trailtech up front. 
And then make sure you have a few inches hanging off the back of the split loom as well for the connections to your battery. Once that's all set, you're good to go. Next, we'll be running the split loom along the body of the tau tau. We're going to bring it up into the battery compartment in an existing hole, and then we'll bring it up front just under the shroud in the middle of the handlebars. In order to get access to your battery compartment, you'll need to pop the lever holding the seat down. Once that's done, you can see that there's a hole where the existing factory wiring is already running. Insert your split loom as shown. Leave yourself plenty of spare. You can always trim off the excess later. Route it along the body of the four-wheeler so that it stays tucked up and neat out of the way. Uh, it's not going to catch on any brush, anything like that. You can leave it dangling near the engine for now. We're going to tuck everything up with zip ties once it's all done. Notice the sensor wires that are exiting the split loom just at the back of the engine. Those are where we're going to connect our air temperature sensor to the back of the head. A Phillips screwdriver is all you need to disconnect the studs on the battery posts. You're going to put your own terminals on here. Again, make sure that they're the right size before you get them all crimped on. Attach your fuse holder to the positive side of the battery. Make sure those connections are crimped solid and that they're not going anywhere. Put as small a fuse as you can in there. Trailtech recommends 1 amp. If you have a 5 amp, that will do as well. Attach your black wire to your negative post and you are all set. Now that the right side of the split looming is all done, we're going to move on to the left side of the vehicle. This is where we're going to install our tachometer pickup sensor, which is essentially just a wire wrapped around your spark plug wire. You'll want about two and a half feet of split loom on hand. You can trim this wire down a little bit. It's probably a little bit long. Get it dry fit into place so you don't accidentally take too much off. Remember that the black insulation on the outside of the wire needs to be stripped off in order to pick up the spark plug signal. Be careful when stripping that. Don't damage the red wire inside. If you've decided to purchase the cylinder head temperature sensor that goes underneath the spark plug. You'll install that at this time now. Run it in the same split loom as your tachometer pickup wire. Remember it's okay if your split loom is a little long. You can always trim it later. Now is also a great time to replace your spark plug if you haven't done it in a while. You'll need an 18 millimeter deep socket in order to remove your spark plug. Gently break the spark plug free and you should be able to unthread it the rest of the way with your fingers. If it's dirty like this one is, definitely swap it out for a new one. While you're at it, put a little thread paste on there if you have it to ensure that the next time you change your plugs out, it comes out easy and it doesn't get stuck. Slip the cylinder head temperature ring under the spark plug as you tighten it down onto the head and make sure that you get it good and snug so that there are no air leaks. Before you reconnect your spark plug wire, take your ignition pickup line that's coming out of the split loom Wrap it around the spark plug wire, close to the head, but still leaving some slack, a total of five times. Get it snug and zip-tied down so it doesn't go anywhere, and that should be enough to pick up an accurate tachometer signal from your spark plug wire. In this section, we're going to show you how to install that water temperature sensor that you pulled out of its housing onto an unused motor mount at the back of the engine. This is going to be a nice pocket of dead air that will give you an even engine temperature reading while you're moving. You're going to use a 10 by 1 millimeter tap and a T-handle, and because we can't reach into the engine compartment with that T-handle, you're going to take a quarter inch drive extension, turn it around backwards, and use that to lengthen your T-handle. You will also need some cutting oil, WD-40 will do here since it's pretty soft material. Get a little oil on the engine and on the tap, and anytime it feels like it's going to get hung up, back it off a little, add more oil, and keep cutting. Once you're through that first bit of aluminum, go ahead and back the tap back out. Grab your brass temperature probe. Put a little thread locker blue on it if you're worried about it rattling. Thread it into place, get it tightened down, and then make your wire connections. Make sure you wrap each wire individually with black tape or pro tip. Use insulated connectors so you don't have to worry about black tape. Get it tucked back into the split loom, attach a few zip ties so it doesn't go anywhere, and you're good to go. Now moving on to the speedometer pickup sensor. You'll start by mixing some JB Weld. I'm using JB Quick because it works just fine and it sets up a little faster. Take your mixed JB Weld over to your front wheel hub, front right wheel if you're facing it. Slather the JB Weld onto the speedometer pickup sensor and stick it right on top of the wheel hub. It should sit flush against the wheel hub so that it doesn't interfere with your braking operation. Your wire connector should be sticking off the front of the wheel hub. That's how you know you have it facing the right direction. Give that JB Weld some time to set up, come back, and give it a push test. Make sure it's not going to fall off of the hub. Now that we see that that's solid, it's time to attach your magnet. 
There's not a lot of science to this part. As long as it's on the wheel and pretty close to the edge, it'll get picked up. Mix up a little bit more JB Weld, put a little bit on that magnet. Make sure you have it as close to the inside of the brake drum as possible so that you have a more accurate speed reading. Make sure that your wheel also spins without hitting that magnet and you're good to go. And now the last thing we have to hook up, the speedometer pickup sensor line. This is going to run alongside your brake line all the way up from the wheel uh, to the handlebars. Make sure you attach your sensor line to the brake line and not to any part of the frame, otherwise your line will be ripped off the next time your suspension travels. Once you have each of your connections made on the trail tech, you're going to want to spend a few minutes doing house cleaning. Trim and add split loom as necessary, get things zip tied into place, get your weatherproofing done with electrical tape, and that's it. Now you've installed a trail tech vapor onto your tow towel. After your connections are made and everything is tidied up, take a minute to double check all the functions on your vapor. You should have speedometer and tachometer, and you should have an engine temperature sensor. Whether you use the converted water unit or whether you purchase the spark plug head temperature unit. You want to take these last few minutes to set the personalized settings on your Trailtech Vapor. Press all three of the front buttons down for a few seconds to customize these options. Make sure that if you're using the stock tires, your measurements read 1834. This is a metric measurement of those tires. You also want to make sure you set the pulses per revolution to 2 for this engine. And make sure that you set your engine temperature limits. This unit will tell you when your engine's getting mildly warm and definitely too warm. 220 and 250 suit my riding style. Yours can be adjusted for however you ride. And that's it. Thank you for watching our how-to video on installing a Trailtech Vapor on your Tau Tau Rhino 250 ATV. Stay tuned for more awesome videos and as always feel free to like, share, and subscribe and if you have any comments or questions don't forget to drop those in the comments section below. See you next time.